I'm Arthur Motes, and I'm here to tell you about my new book, The Motes Theory of Life. If you haven't picked up a copy yet, I strongly encourage you to. This book not only is a fun read, but it's a guide to helping you become a person of impact and inspiration. If you are ready to take the next step to improving not only your life, but those around you as well, go get a copy of The Motes Theory of Life, and it's available at motestheory.com. What's up, what's up? It's the Arthur Motes Experience with Deke. I'm Arthur Motes, and that's my main man, Deke. What's up, dude? Bro, I I was laughing to myself because um remember the other day when we recorded, my Apple Watch started calling Dobbs, right? Yeah, yeah. And literally the next day, Dobbs, I get an alert I did from see you and say today. Yep. He's like, oh, and he Jacksonville came up Jaguars. And- I'm like, oh, snap. Like, it's crazy. So we had to shout Dobbs out, man. They were, like, they were talking about him being like the the, the NASA guy. Yeah, how, how he spends whatever. his off seasons working yeah. with NASA. I was like, yo, that's insane, man. Shout out to my dog Dobbs for that, man. I said we definitely gonna need to get him up here. Oh, that'd be dope. Yeah. That'd be really dope. Like that's a dude that we talk sure about. That'd be a man. really interesting conversation. Heck yeah, man. That's a dude that does it both, man. He, he excels on the football field. He's already did it at Tennessee, was able to get drafted. He's going on, you know, stacking these years in the NFL, mm-hmm. but then also Showing that he's more than an athlete, man, in terms of what he majored in at college. I mean, the dude is a legit rocket scientist. Like, it's, it's insane. As far as God knows. I love it. <laughs> and he's super cool, man. Shout out to the fit. He always got a nice outfit on, man. My type of guy. That would be dope. Yeah, My yeah. type of guy, man. Look out, I guess. Yeah, man. We might have to, might have to get that in the works, B. <laughs> uh, well, here's the thing. We, we got something planned. Did you want to get anything off your chest? Did, hey, uh, man. So, so you're so you going you gonna to take me down this path today? No, we don't have to. I we, well, okay, you know what? No, you no, know no, what? no, no, no. <laughs> hey, hey. Deke know what he was doing today. Shout out to the T-Mac, too, man. I like the jersey. Thanks, dude. All right, so look, man. <laughs> we're going to give y'all a little heads up. So we got a couple. We got a couple things planned. But, but first off, what we were going to talk about were the AFC North draft grades. But prior to that, something had came up today, and I had came in here to vent to Deke about it. Thought we had got it off our chest. And, nah, and Deke, no, 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 because now I'm on my soapbox. Deke threw me the oop. So here we go. <laughs> We had had this conversation, as everybody knows, about Jameis Winston to the Steelers and that whole dynamic, right? Some of the things we talked about initially were the money element of it. Maybe it's going to cost too much. We could spend that money elsewhere. Then we talked even more so about the belief that we have in Mason and then also the power struggle of if you bring in a Jameis Winston, how would that affect Big Ben's confidence well, and things like that. Well, like that, was necessary yeah, even fans. like fans' reaction, yeah. controversy, and all that type of stuff. Yeah, so yeah. so we were going down our list talking about all these things, and you know, some of the things we agreed upon, some of the things we differed on. And then Jameis signs with the Saints, and obviously there were two reports I think everybody has seen now where one says that he uh, turned down the Steelers' offer that would have been more money to go with the Saints because he wanted to learn under Sean Payton and Drew Brees. And then a Pittsburgh guy said it was a source that said that that wasn't true, that there still isn't all for him at all. And I was cool. I said, you know what? Because you could pick and choose who you want to go with. I'm not tripping either way. Until the contract numbers came out for Jameis Winston's one-year contract. And this is where I became a little uneasy, to say the least. <laughs> Salty. <laughs> A lot of salt. (laughs) So it said that Jameis Winston signed for a contract of one year, $1 million, with a potential of earning up to 3.4 based off of incentives. I said, man, so one year, $1 million. Jameis Winston, $1 million. So I said, you know, let me look at the quarterback room and see what some of these other quarterbacks on the current roster are making. I said, man, Mason Rudolph is going to make, I think it was eight twenty five, eight hundred twenty five thousand this year. I was like, gosh, wow, that's just very, very close in money right there. Very, very, very close. Then I looked at Devil and Doug Hodges. I said, man, it's pretty much half a million dollars he's making this year. It's very, very close in money. And I just said to myself, I said, I doubt. I don't know which is worse. <laughs> if the Steelers didn't offer him the the one point whatever he could offer 1.25 1.5 mm. like like I, I wouldn't have mind if they would have offered him that and then he didn't take it and sign with the saints for that reason i'm cool with that i can live with that <laughs> but but to see him sign for one and and for it to be reports of sources that we didn't even offer what are we what are we doing am, am i wrong like i understand 
your argument, right? Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear the fans, this and that. Well, it's interesting because we did have the conversation off the mic where you kind of assured me, gave me more of the locker room take on it. Which, where, which was why that's, I kind of felt this whole way throughout this debate. We never had that conversation no, until today. Yeah, I never really understood that. But you basically laid it out for me. If we brought in Jameis in the locker room, it's like not even a question at mm-hmm. all. That's just more media stuff. And all I know is media fan stuff. And, yeah. you know, I just I don't want to be combating my, my fellow fans right. and all that type of stuff. I just want a peaceful return to the season, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and what, what Deke was talking about was even more so we talk locker room culture and we talk about, like, which quarterbacks could potentially ruffle Ben's feathers, right? Because that's what it's all about. And we talked about with Jordan Love to the Packers, like how does Aaron Rodgers and those fans feel about it? Is it a controversy? And the reason why I told Deke that I don't view Jameis coming as a controversy is because Ben and Jameis aren't in the same vein. Like Ben is Ben. Jameis is not to that level, not even close right now from a iconic standpoint, a star power standpoint, a notoriety standpoint. And I said, Nobody on this team outside of maybe one person has ever been a bigger star than Ben. Even when A.B. and L. Bell were in the height of their careers, they were never viewed as bigger stars than Big Ben. Even when Troy was on the team, Troy wasn't bigger than Ben. Like, that was just clear cut. Ben was the guy. As soon as that rookie run happened... Mm-hmm. He was a legend here. And, and we joked about it. I said, there's only been one time where we've had a guy on this team that was bigger than Ben in terms of star power, in terms of iconic status. And I said, that was when Vic came. Right. Like across the nation. Right. And, like yeah. like Vic, we talked about, man, He he's just an icon regardless of if you love him or hate him because of the whole situation with the dogs. Regardless of all that, Vic, I mean, his name, what he brings when there's he comes a reason to the team. He, like, yeah, he had shoes whenever he was right. in the league and, you know. All the, all the sponsors, like there was a reason. Like, yeah, so so we were saying that from a dynamic standpoint, that was the only time that we've ever seen that power struggle a little bit happen. But what I'll say with both of those guys, what they did do really well was Vic was very humble in that situation. And him and Ben did communicate to make that thing a lot smoother. But initially it was some unease about that. Whereas with Jameis Winston, Jameis is never going to be in that category right now so that's what i was telling you the whole time we had these conversations i never brought that up but it's like i've seen that and i've seen been with like mega stars in the nfl ab is a mega star in the nfl but ab was never going to be bigger than ben yeah and it was like with james no matter what james did has done he's not going to be bigger than ben over the next two to three years so that's why i never viewed it it was, it was going to be an issue and then to see that he signed for one James wants the one year, one million dollars. <laughs> I said, man, let's be real. I, 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 man, I think Mason's a good dude. I think he's going to develop. And I'm honestly not ready to move on from him after one season. We've already talked about that as well. But you're not going to sit here and tell me, and I'm sure Mason would agree too, that, hey, man, if you could get James Winston on your team for one million dollars, I'm pretty sure you should put an offer in for that. <laughs> now, if he turns it down, cool. No harm, no foul. But one million dollars, man, you could have offered one point. One million dollars. What? What? One. One point zero two five million dollars. But to not even. I mean, and that's depending on which source you want to believe, right? Right. Because this and this is the whole catch twenty two, right? So when the first articles came out about yo, he offered it. Source said he turned it down. They was like, oh man, you're lying. This is crazy. Steelers wouldn't do that. Why would they? They don't have enough money. Then the Steelers source comes out and says, nah, man, they ain't do anything. We ain't want them. So to see him sign for one million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> y'all tell me what's up man mm. are we hustling backwards is that what we're doing because to, to not offer a, a guy like Jameis who threw for 5,000 yards and 30 something touchdowns to not offer him 1.1 million dollars we don't have 1.1 and that's without restructuring we got enough to do that we have we have figured out ways this off season to make things work so you're going to tell me that that's us trying to win that's us trying to create the best roster we can create. That's a cheaper insurance policy than I thought. I think he was going to get for three, maybe four million dollars in New Orleans. What? God. Damn. So <sighs> there's a lot of ways to look at this, though, because <sighs> make if, me happy. Make, 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 well, I was going to say if you believe the reports <laughs> that we did offer, mm-hmm. but it was it was actually more than the Saints. Jameis just wanted to go to the Saints. I would feel so much better. I think that's a play with Jameis where. He has this idea in the back of his mind, all right, I'm thinking long term here, what's going to make me look best next free agency? And that's going through the whole Saint system, a la Mm -hmm. Teddy Bridgewater. But you brought up that he has to play. 
I don't know how certain I am that he's got to play. I think just the idea of yeah. we talked about this before. If you're first round, uh, first round draft pick, you're always going to have that first round brand, brand. with you. Mm-hmm. So maybe even if you aren't the best after two, three years in the league, you'll get another chance because of that first round grade as opposed to being a fourth rounder. So I'm thinking maybe just, oh, he went through Breeze. He learned under Breeze. He learned under Sean Payton. Even if he doesn't play, there might be some teams looking at that like, ah, I think I think we could take a shot with him. And you know what? When you say that, the more you say it, I do agree with that because I think about <laughs> the Sean McVay coaching tree. Right. And how everybody's getting a job of you or your man. I'm not, say, I'm not saying it's right or anything. Right, right. I agree with you, but that does happen. We've seen it. Hey, man, I, I held the clipboard for Sean McVay. Oh, man, you could be our head coach today, baby. What's up? So with Jameis, and when you're comparing the names, would you rather say you were under Sean Payton and Drew Brees versus, because I don't even want to say Mike Thomas, because Mike Thomas is not an offensive-minded coach. So it would be no. more Randy Feekner and Ben Roethlisberger. So if you're just on paper and say you don't get a snap this year in either situation, I do agree that people would say, well, hey, man, Sean Payton and Drew Brees, I'm a lot more confident Mike, Mike than Mike that. Mike McCarthy situation. Right, right. I'm a lot more confident <laughs> in that than necessarily Randy Feigner and Big Ben if he never took a snap. So I, I can definitely see that. <sighs> <laughs> but, then, but then on the other side, then, if you're saying, I believe the report that we didn't offer him, that's why I lean more towards what I initially said about Jameis's mindset going into this, where he's more or less thinking about next year, because you got to think another team out there at least offered two or three million but, aside from us, right? But, but why where would, he, why he's would, just kind of set on the Saints no matter why what. Why wouldn't that be us, though? Huh? Why wouldn't that be us, though? Well, I told you, too, that it's kind of a bad look for us, so there's no reason to act like look? we were trying to get him, you know? How? How? <laughs> I, I because would have much rather they said that we offered and he just turned it down for that situation versus them saying that we didn't even like <laughs> attempt it. Remember, it's completely false. If you believe this, you are just crazy. So please tell me, are we crazy to think that Jameis right now is better than Mason Rudolph right now? For a 200, it's not even a $200,000 difference. I think Mason's going to make eight, $826,000 this year. And that's not counting incentives and things like that. And Jameis's base salary is supposed to be $1 million. You do the math. So it, does that make me crazy? No. Like you said, like, like, what, like what are you we talking about mic, here? You said at least you want to feel better about it. I, I, that would make me feel so much better to at least know we, <laughs> at least, we, we at attempted. Least we, tried. <laughs> we attempted. And, and not even saying that you're going to move on from Mason because you're looking at this as a one year deal, right? Right. But you mean to tell me, okay. Just for next year, yes. But just for would, next year. You so, would take in a vacuum, Jameis, over because, Mason. Because, yes. and, and this is the thing if Mason is your third quarterback, you're not tripping. But you mean to tell me that you would still rather have Paxton Lynch? Or Doug. And Devil and Doug Hodges up there over Jameis because the money is not different. The money is not different. We talk a less than a million dollar difference for both of these quarterbacks. Man, come on, bro. I just, I think he was set on the Saints, dude. <laughs> I think he was set on the Saints. I'm just sad. <laughs> I mean, our QB room, like in terms of depth and everything, having him and Mason there behind Ben, <sighs> you do feel better in case Ben. No, gets no, you hurt. wouldn't feel yes. better. You, you, would, you would smile. That would be a big boy smile. Dude, well, I, I, I'm changing my tune just based off what you you told me off the mic because if, well, now I said it on the mic. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah but more, I mean, more end up off the mic though. Yeah, right. But you breaking down that you know that would just be all media and fan fabrication. It's, yeah, it's no under any <laughs> strain of the imagination, man. It's no way that anybody on that team, including Ben, feels threatened by Jameis Winston's presence because Jameis just isn't in that category. You know what? I'm having I'm having trouble too, just facing the music of potential retirement in the next three four years too. Understand? That's, it's it's just it's just it, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. Trust me, we all are because we don't want to see what it looks like when Ben is officially gone. Like at least last year, you know what got us through last year. As bad as it was, we said, "Well, Ben's coming back next year." Like yeah. remember that was the whole thing. Right. Like he's gonna be back. We're not tripping. But we know as these years continue to go that's on, it's I mean. like that's what I mean. The the, the <laughs> The credits are going to roll eventually. It's tough, man. <clears throat> and it's sooner rather than later. And that's the whole like thing. And that's the part that, that makes us all uneasy. Because, yeah, I, I, you, we talked about my quarterbacks that I've had to interact with throughout right. my career. I love Ben. I need him. I, I, you got to stay. You feel me? I'm with you on that. But at the same time, it's like I understand to continue to win, you do have to have a succession plan. I mean, you even saw the reports even with the Aaron Rodgers situation where they say, yeah, we already know Aaron is our guy for the next three years. But this is the dude that, hey, we feel can continue on once that's over. So it's a smooth transition. Nobody, trust me, you don't want 
that drop off. I've experienced that drop off multiple times. It sucks. It's a terrible feeling. And then when you look at your roster and you're like, we are so talented, except at the quarterback position. It is a bad feeling because it's a hopeless feeling. It's like last year. You have to, everybody has to play perfect. Perfect to win. Think about that, man. I'm trying to think of drop offs too of as of late, like quarterbacks that have left. I guess the Colts got lucky with Peyton Manning when he left. Yeah, Andrew because Luck. Of Andrew Luck. Mm-hmm. And then, but remember they drafted Andrew Luck before they had got rid of Peyton. That's when they had their one overall pick. Right, right. And then you gotta think too. If we're thinking Peyton Manning still Broncos though, they had yeah. a big drop. Like that was that's Huge. been a bad scenario that's been for bad. them. Right. Now they finally got Locke. Maybe mm-hmm. there's no guarantees with him though Correct. either. Um yeah, we'll see with the the Chargers now. We're gonna see about Giants. the Patriots. Yeah, Patriots. They're another too. one. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. Yeah, we've had some. If you've been a top guy the past, you know what, ten, fifteen years, mm-hmm. there really hasn't been. We haven't seen that scenario right. play out. We're yet, gonna so see what, the, what happens with the Chargers this year. Yeah, because they're either gonna go with Tyrod or they're going with uh, uh, Hester. I mean, not Hester, uh, Herbert. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, and my mom thinking down. I'm like, yeah, God damn it. Yeah, yeah, dude, think that the guys that have been top five over the past 10, 15 years, we haven't really seen that transition yet Correct. outside of Peyton Manning. Yeah, and, and now he, Brady adds to that list, so. So we'll see what happens, yeah. man. So that's my biggest thing, man. It just I could, it I could, I could see what you're, you're thinking there. I just, at least put us in the mix. Like you said, just be in the mix. That's what it be in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't have to go through. But if you if you put it in the mix, at least lets me know that hey, this team is committed to making sure that we're going to be good this year, regardless of what happens. Yeah, like we have because that that them not in this. Like I said, it it depends on which source you want to go with, and I right. think it's going to be funny now when we start seeing who goes back and says the same thing I'm saying in terms of man, they should have offered them, and the people that are going to go back and say, well, there was a source that said they did offer them. They did offer them. You see it? Right. And it's like, oh, y'all were the same ones that were saying, oh, that's a lie. Look at this source right here. So, for me, just, just, oh, I'm just sad. I can't even get it out right now. I'm just sad, bro. I understand. Because I'm confused. I, I, I understand. I'm confused. I, I, have my, I have my Ben bias where I'm just kind of like, eh, but I, I think to maybe settle your nerves a little bit, I think like I said, Jameis, he was set on the Saints no matter what. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope so. You, I mean, you could you could go to bed with that. He, he could have been set on the Saints no matter what, but we could have still said, "Hey, Jameis, we got at 1. least 2. yeah." You're you're more or less thinking from a Steeler standpoint, from of, a money standpoint, like for one million dollars. Like, what are we talking about? One, just one, not two, not three, because that was the whole thing when they said when the the report the source came out and said that the Steelers offered him more money. How are they gonna offer on three, four, five million dollars? We won't have that much. And we was like, well, you can restructure all that is true. You can make that happen. But for one million dollars, we 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 don't have one million. You just room. you just want to believe we're doing our best. That's our it. best possible. That's it. Is that is that too much to ask for? We're, Deke, Deke, is that is that too much for me to ask for <laughs> if I want hey Deke, if if for the we're company, going we're going through every nook and cranny and Deke, crevice. Are, are, we, to, are we trying to find a way to be great or are we just we just trying to be good? I don't know, man. I, don't, I mean, I still think we're trying to be great. <laughs> I always believe that. <laughs> By not offering 1.001. I mean, if it's one million, it's just 1.001. What about that? We could have offered that. I don't know. <laughs> why is that. why is there no other reports coming out about other teams and what they potentially Well, I offered? think because the money just released. Like, they just... So we might see some stuff here. yeah, and that's why I'm saying we might see people go back and start saying, "Well, yeah, the Steelers did say they offered him." When that source from the Pittsburgh people said, "Oh no, man, that's crazy. They would never offer him." Like, so I think now. I mean, gonna... you, I mean, if you're Patriots fans, even if you yes, like certain t- Jaguars, absolutely. any of these teams, you got to be. Yeah. You should be thinking the same thing. Yes, at least. absolutely. And I think now that the money has come out, we will start to see some of that stuff play out. And until we can hear directly from Jameis in terms of... Well, nothing's of, coming out with the Patriots. Like, true. Yeah, never deny does. that. But until we see something or hear something from Jameis, I, I think that's going to be the whole, like, the mystery behind it. Let's see if he reveals something. Yeah, man. Dude, he, I don't know. He's, he's I don't gonna, think he will, though. No, there's no way. Cause yeah. Like I said, he's looking long-term. You don't uh-huh. want you don't want to mix burn that it up or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, if he was committed, like, hey, I signed a five-year deal with the Saints, then you could expect him to say some stuff. But, yeah, he's like, man, I'm, I'm going to hit this market again in a year, baby. Mm-hmm. Like, I got to be cool. Yeah. One of these guys might be my employer next year. No, exactly. Exactly. Man, oh, gosh. Just the thought of it. No, I, I definitely see where you're coming from, dude. I, I said I, I would feel so much comfortable with my quarterback room being Big Ben, Jameis, and Mason, especially with Jameis for $1, $1 million. 
Like, <laughs> just between him and Mason's contract, that's not even $2 million. No. No. That's a joke. We'll see if he can that's improve. Let's see if Mason can make a jump. I guess we, hopefully we don't see that, actually. We only see it in preseason. That's all. Right. <laughs> because my thought process, I say, man, James here for one year. If something were to happen to Ben for a game or two, James comes in, we're fine. James leaves. You still got Mason. Mason's still developing behind both of those guys. And then whenever it comes time for Mason to potentially take the reins, then he's good. I think I will, the thing I will say about Jameis is you would feel better in a playoff scenario with him. Without a doubt. I think I think we're good in a one, two, or three game span during with the Mason. regular season yeah. with Mason. Yeah. If we had to have a Nick Foles situation where Ben misses the last three games plus playoffs, we would feel more comfortable with the Jameis yes. versus a Mason. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> but it depends on how Mason would play in those yeah. two or three regular season games or how he has improved. Because like I said, dude, some some just look completely different in that Jets game with him. I don't know dude, what it was. Confidence. Yeah. I said that was my biggest thing. I said, I said he looked very confident, like a guy's playing like I don't care. <laughs> I'm just gonna do me. Whereas before he said we like we said it looked like he was playing not to lose or not to mess up, mm-hmm. and that's usually the difference, man. No, it is, and I guess the just the basic at the end of it, Jameis is known, Mason's the unknown. Though. Right, that's that's about it. Yeah, and I just love how man people wanted to. Hey, man, thirty picks, thirty picks, can't. Just understand, if you're going to talk 30 picks, you're still going to talk the 30-plus touchdowns and the 5,000 passes. Well, I was I was telling you this, too, because I had – who did I have in the, my fantasy championship? I think I had Perryman. Mm-hmm. And so I watched the, the week 16 or 17 Bucks game, whoever yeah. they were playing against. and That last game of the season, I think it was – was it the Falcons? I can't remember. It might have been the it Falcons. It might have been the Falcons, the pick six that uh, ended. It might have been. Yeah. But Perryman ended up having a good game, but you could see clear as day – because this was the time we were having mm-hmm. having Duck. And uh, I was just like, man, this is this is way better than having Duck or Mason. And the thing, when you... Just seeing how he threw well, the ball, how he operated James, as quarterback. Like, Jameis balls out. He just gets real arrogant with his ball placement. And you'll see some of the interceptions. It's just kind of like, Jameis, you didn't even need to try that. You could have went here, which is a safer throw. But sometimes when you're a guy like Jameis that has that type of talent, they can put the ball all type of place. They can throw for a ton of yards... You are like, yo, I, I can make that. I'm good. And that's just the gunslinger mentality. We talk about with Big Ben, he has it. Brett Favre. I mean, all the elite quarterbacks have that mentality. It's just some guys are more calculated with it. When we talk about a Drew Reese, for example. Yeah. Drew is very calculated with when I'm going to take that risk. Peyton Manning, outside of that rookie year, very calculated in terms of when he's going to take Nor that risk. last year. <laughs> yeah. Last year, man, that arm went there, man. That, that Yeah. <laughs> It was me and your arm strapped on his or on his body. <laughs> we throwing that thing. Yep, yep. Yeah, <laughs> man. Well, Jeez. we got we got that covered. You, is there anything else you wanted to touch on with that? Or <laughs> you know what? Let, let's let's just go. Let's All right, just go. We, we're gonna go. So draft still a little fresh. The draft is fresh. Uh, so and I'm I'm still healing from some, my wounds. <laughs> there were some teams that made some moves in our division here. There were, man. I, I see your transition. I can't go with your transition, dude. Nah, that's all right. You can take it from It's here. the magic journey. That's what it is, man. Nah, they got, man. You got the Orlando Magic, <laughs> the T Mac. I love T Mac, man. Let's go. But yeah. Um, so we were gonna talk about just how the Steelers and their draft stacked up against mm. everyone else in the division here. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Deke, ladies and gentlemen, man. Deke growing today, baby. Nah, man, I'm dude, proud of nah, you, man. I'm like proud of you. Nah, dude. All right. So <laughs> I guess the simplest way to do it, we'll go team by team, probably be easier. Yeah, yeah. That's good with me. Yeah. And then what, just how everyone ranks up against each other? Yeah. We'll go team by team and then we'll rank. Right, team by team. Like, all right, I like this pick for them. I didn't like this pick. Right, right, okay, yeah, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, so with the Ravens, um, I guess the, the, the three picks that really stood out to me the most Obviously, Patrick Queen, J.K. Dobbins, I, I obviously was really high on that pick. Mm-hmm. That was one of the reasons why I gave our grade the, way, the grade that I gave us. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, those two, uh, like I said, Patrick Queen, J.K. Dobbins, and then Devin uh, Dervinay. Mm-hmm. But I say, yeah, those are the three dudes that really stood out to me, man, in that class. Patrick Queen, I mean, he was pretty much probably one of the top three linebackers like off ball linebackers behind obviously Isaiah Simmons and stuff like that Mm -hmm. but this dude man was prolific at LSU could ball out crazy athletic and when you think about what the Ravens needed they needed an inside linebacker and he's not going to be the Ray Lewis type you know I mean he's the think more Ryan Shazier type that's what he brings to the table so I thought that was a huge pickup by them obviously J.K. Dobbins we were high on him here very productive at Ohio State 2k on the ground like it's nasty could run and then you think about what he's 
coming into with an offense with Lamar Jackson and Mark Ingram that was already just crazy. Yeah. Now you're bringing in J.K., who's going to be fresher, younger legs than a Mark. And you also know that long term, if Mark was only there for another year, that's going to be their mm-hmm. guy for the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. So for me, man, those two, I'm just like, dude, that's that's a major win in terms of the rich getting richer on offense and their defense, the rich getting richer, because that's a huge upgrade. I mean, before they drafted Patrick Queen, their best linebacker was going to be L.J. Fort. Now, L.J. is my dog, but L.J. isn't on that type of level right yeah. now. Yeah. I looked at the depth chart. Like he's going to be starting apparently. Yeah, like, he's yeah. going to be starting right off the back. So that was that was a big pickup for them. Um, is there anything else you wanted to touch on with them? Um, well, even with the uh, when you look at Justin, uh, I think it's Mudo uh, Mudobuke. Then say he said the D tackle out of Texas A and M. Yeah, yeah. He was another cat that was crazy productive, rushing the passer, stopping the run. He's going to fit re- like that defense is already stacked, and they just add more pieces to that now. Well, yeah, obviously their defensive line is completely loaded right yeah. now with Wolf, Calais, Campbell. Mm-hmm. But uh, with them losing warmly, I guess they needed to bring in someone for yeah. some depth. So that was smart on their part. Now with uh, with Queen, obviously, uh, yeah, you're definitely right. I mean, he's going to be starting right off the yeah. back, so that definitely fills a need. And then with Dobbins, mm-hmm. Mark Ingram, yeah. he might not be back after next year because right. they're – there is the cap hit of I think I was looking at this. It was six million. If they release him, it would only be a cap hit of one million, mm-hmm. and he's getting up there in age. So there right. is that possibility. And knowing how the Ravens run their offense, mm-hmm. it's running focused. So yes. having an extra guy in there, a young guy who's you liked him a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he was in the mix for who I wanted us to pick, but oh whoa 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 in the mix whoa, in the mix whoa, in the mix. Whoa. Easy, Deek. Don't tell on yourself, man. What? What do you mean? <laughs> you said you didn't want him. Remember, you said, man, when Claypool was on the board, I'd rather have Claypool over him. I would, yes. But in terms of running back, <laughs> no. But I'm, my, well, my main thing was. <laughs> so, so please tell me that. <laughs> please tell me. How could he have been in the mix for one of the running backs you wanted? Yes. When the running backs you wanted were going to have to go at that second round pick. Yeah, I mean, I I wanted a running back, receiver, or linebacker. <laughs> you funny. And we went receiver, and I'm gonna, <laughs> dude. I'm, trust, I'm trusting Colbert. <laughs> and we're not talking about with Colbert. We said what you wanted. I didn't care, dude. No. I didn't care, man. Because here's the problem: what I want, it's not necessarily right. It's not necessarily. Now right. you gonna discredit yourself for the greater good of well, the team? Well, yeah, because. Dude, here's the thing. Like, looking back, I was trying to think of picks that I'd want or mm-hmm. didn't want, and then what happened. Okay. I mean, a big one was Pouncey. I didn't want Pouncey because okay. Des Bryant was still on the board. Yeah. So, think right there. All right. Yeah. It's worked out pretty good. <laughs> so, I'm, what I want is yeah. is not the best, necessarily. <laughs> Even though between I'm Pouncey good. and Des Bryant, I don't really think either one would have been a bad pick. Nah, but I mean, at the time, like, we did need some line help. But. Yes, like Pouncey changed the face of that offensive line. He was a part of the the rejuvenation down there. Obviously, they took him, and then was it a year later they go and get to Castro, and then from there they just continue to build it up. So I think that definitely plays a huge role. Like I don't think I was big on us getting Bud either, and like that's yeah. turned out pretty good. Mm-hmm. So I mean, after the fact, yes, I'm good yeah. with Clayful. <laughs> I'm just gonna trust the process. That's all. I'm gonna trust Colbert. Dude. You are funny, bro. That's you are. So it was. A, it was a good pick for them. Dobbins was a good pick. It was a great I, we, pick for them, man. And then, like you said, with uh, I don't, actually I don't know if you mentioned this, but Duvernay, they they just need receivers. Yes, yeah. And a lot of people are saying this guy's a sleeper, so mm-hmm. they need well, you receivers. You him up with Hollywood out there too, man. So that's definitely gonna help. Yeah, I don't know who now. their second receiver is gonna be because I was looking. They have uh, Boykin, who they drafted, I think, mm-hmm. last year in the third round. He didn't really do anything. Um, and they uh, also see, have. Who, I forget who the other the, guy was. Uh, Willie Sneed. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's getting up there in age too. Yeah. So, but they still got Mark Andrews because remember they their tight ends had a ton of action last year. That was part of their offense too. No, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, either way, they need a receiver. Their draft was really good. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely. I was, yeah. I definitely think they hit on everything they needed to, and they got yeah. talent. It wasn't just like, hey, hey, I'm fitting the position that mm-hmm. I need. They actually got well, talent. And I also like how. With Marshall Yonder retiring this year, they went out and they drafted in the third and fourth round two guards, man. Tyree Phillips out of Mississippi State and then Ben Bredesen out of Michigan. So that we talked about the competition element of it, right? Bringing in more bodies to compete for spots instead of just giving guys positions, which we did in Pittsburgh in terms of drafting a guy, signing uh, Stefan. I thought that was huge. And they did the exact same thing. And to do that with third and fourth pick, I mean, third and fourth round picks, I thought that was pretty good by them. 
They, I yeah. mean, they they had a ton of draft picks compared to what we had, man. So no, they did. They, they definitely did. Well, felt like that, they hit, and that was one of the things I was going to ask. I guess maybe we could focus on when we rank them. Uh, are we going to be considering the whole Minka thing or no? It's just going to be I'm the not, draft. I, you know how I feel. I'm not. I don't. I don't really guys. want to either. Yeah. But if we were, I think that would bump us up a little yeah, higher. But it's hard to do that. Like I feel like people try to try to justify, but I'm like, if we're gonna do that, then we need to go down the rabbit hole of every team that traded away <laughs> a player or, or traded away a draft pick for a player. Like I feel like we only we want to say it in Pittsburgh this year to like make us sound better. But then when we say, okay, we're gonna do that for the Ravens, are we gonna do that for the Browns? We're we gonna do that for the Bengals. Now everybody's like, oh no, I want, we ain't doing all that now. We not we not right. Going yeah, what I guess the Brown. When did they trade yeah. for Ode, or what did they trade for? Right. Though, but that's what I'm saying. Like we would literally have to go through. It would have been go the, through that would have been stuff. if we were ranking them last yeah. year. And then they said, well, also if we're going to talk about adding Minka to this class, I've seen people say we got to add Devin Bush because he was a part of the third. Remember what they traded up to get him? No, I'm serious. <laughs> that's that. So are we? If we're going to go there, are we going to really should, go there? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, then we then we'd start off the talking about Odell Beckham yeah. and everything with the but, with but the Browns. Still affairs. I love still affairs. You know that. But we we joke about this all the time. Like. When it comes time to make themselves feel better about something, we're gonna pull up every man. Minka's our first round pick. I'm like, bro, Minka was already in the league. He was already a proven commodity after that one year in Miami. Mm-hmm. It's totally different than when you're drafting somebody that you've never seen play in the league before. Right. Minka's gonna be, I think he's 23 or he's gonna be 23. He's that, like, because how because I, that, that's what I'm saying. If if we were going off that, I mean, you would just put Steelers one, right? Because I have if a we proven all pro, correct. None of these guys are proven. Right. So we won't, yeah, for the yeah. sake of this case. Because we otherwise, we're going to have to go through and look at everybody that got traded away for Cincy, Cleveland, and Baltimore. Yep. And rank it that way, too. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I'm sure you don't want to do that. I'm sure much. Steeler fans don't want to do that. It's too much. So yeah. so let, let's stop trying to pull that out, <laughs> and we'll be all right. <laughs> all right. So we, we want to go Bengals or Browns here? Uh, Let's go Bengals. Okay. Keep it, you know, alphabetical order. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right. So obviously, man... I thought they probably had the best draft in the AFC North, but I think it's NFL tough wise, just because like, it's tough just because they're ranking versus the Ravens going into the draft. They had correct. the number they, one yeah. pick, so they're, and they're they had the number thirty three pick. The quality a borderline of players, first pick. yes. The quali- like you got Joe Burrow, T Higgins as your first two picks, but then I love the Logan Wilson pick out of Wyoming. This cat can ball. Okay. Like, ball, ball, man. Silent to sideline, productive, catches picks, does it all. Like, crazy. I, I'm going to trust you on dude, that. Dude, yeah. can ball. Like, I, I was, <laughs> listen, man, you know how my I feel about my- voice is cracking You know bad. how I feel about my- I don't know what's going get on. You, get some more water in your system, man. <laughs> but, like, man, when I talk about my linebackers, like, he's one of them guys I'm like, okay, I like this cat. I think he's going to do something special. Okay. And then also Akeem Davis Gaither out of App State. He's another guy. Like, I felt like <clears throat> what Akeem brings to the table. Think, so if Logan is your, your mic, right? He, he's more of your Luke Keekley type. Mm-hmm. Akeem, though, Akeem is going to be that Sam Will 4 3 off ball linebacker that can cover, but at the same time, he blitzes a ton and is very productive. So, you know, how we talk about Vince Williams, right? How that's our blitzing linebacker. That's what this guy is. But the, the, is less about necessarily scheming him up for some free blitzes and more so he's rushed against tackles in one, like at a high clip. So that's another thing where I'm like, dude, that's and when you talk about their defense, they need linebackers. They need help on defense. So I thought that those two picks in terms of Logan and Akeem are huge. But like I guess obviously bringing Joe Burrow in as their quarterback, they needed that. Him versus Andy Dalton, however you want to slice it, we all know it's gonna be Joe Burrow because that's the first round pick. Are they still talking about bringing Dalton back? <clears throat> Man, yes, the, the this, man, it was some more reports no from Bengals camp that hey, it's no guarantee that Joe Burrow is going to be the starter this no, year. Okay, He's going to compete. It was like, yo, get out of here, man. Trade dog. We all it's, know it's time to move on. When you draft a guy number one overall, he's that's, not a free agent, guy. is he? No, I think he has one year left. No what? Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. I did not know that. Yes, I did not. I thought he was a free agent. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> wow. So they're talking about that. Then obviously you still have a. You still have AJ Green on the roster, but you're bringing in T Higgins, and we all know what T Higgins is, man. Yeah, you got to get rid of Dalton. Like you have to. Get, you're yeah. bringing in a new era here. Mm-hmm. That's not gonna necessarily go over yeah. well, um, dude. Well, it's interesting with the the linebackers that you mentioned. Everyone was saying that yeah, they're pretty solid too. But 
they don't have any really linebackers on their roster yeah. that you're feeling too good about. They got this dude. I was looking him up. Uh, Jermaine Pratt, he started nine games last year. Yeah. His his numbers were pretty decent. But then the other two, uh, Jordan Evans, he's more of like a reserve role guy, special teams. And then Josh Bynes, who's been in the league for a while. He, yeah. He's Shout like, out to Josh, man. Yeah, he's performed in, in his roles that he was given. Yeah, but I mean, he's even more when of, he went to uh, Baltimore last year, he was very productive there. Man, he came on and hopped on a moving train. Obviously, we spent time at AZ together. But crazy, smart, cerebral guy. Just not the the athlete, not the caliber nah, of player some of these other guys. And that's that's kind of what they're saying right now, that these two linebackers, maybe even the seventh round pick, but I think that's that's just kind of fan hype maybe, uh, that they they could come in right yeah. now and, and start for the team and be like long-term starters. So if that's the case, that's obviously something that they needed. And uh, they're a rebuilding team. Obviously, Burrow and Higgins start something fresh there on offense. I mean, Higgins, Boyd, and, and A.J. Green, that's, Joe Mixon, yeah, if, if nice. Burrow can keep it together, that's, yeah. that's not bad for them. Well, and I really want to know what the plan will be for Dalton because he's supposed to I think make seventeen point five. This, Jeez, is a, oh this is he has this year. This is the last year of his deal, and then I think it's an option for twenty twenty one. This is wild. Yeah, so it's like if he's making seventeen point five. Now, granted, with Joe being on a rookie deal is different, but he still was the number one overall pick, so he's still going to cost. It's not like the traditional cheap of late first round or second round like this dude's still gonna have a number associated with what would you do if you're the Bengals? well for me we always preach depth so if joe comes in and this isn't a traditional all season right so he's not gonna get the otas he's probably not gonna get the full training camp that's asking of a lot that's asking a lot to just throw him out there without (laughs) that full all season so you could use andy similar situation like how we saw tyrod and baker Andy the first couple of games until Joe gets up to speed and then you throw Joe out there. Mm-hmm. Or you could just bet the whole house on it and say, hey, get rid of Dalton. <laughs> you know that's what I would do. Hope I don't for th- the best with Joe. <laughs> and then if Joe falls flat on his face, now you got to eat it for a whole season. And I don't know how... I mean, he seems like a pretty confident guy, but you don't that know confidence what... would kill you, man. You, you don't know what that could do with your confidence facing the Steelers defense and the Ravens even, defense. Even the Browns defense. Yeah. Think about that, man. I think it's easy to say that those three teams are head and shoulders above the Bengals right now. Yeah, you so, see them twice a year. <laughs> so throwing him in the fire against those teams right off the mm-hmm. bat, I don't know. And that, your O-line still that, shaky. That could definitely be interesting for his whole yeah. long-term... Um, O-line shaky... Still got a coach who's still learning his way in the NFL. So I could see why they would. I mean, it's a, it's an interesting thing to think yeah. about because I'm thinking Andy Dalton's gone, but eh, would it be the wisest right. move? I don't know. So that's the whole. And everyone's move. thinking you're the first overall pick. You're just going to start day right. one. But it's a lot that goes into that thing, man. So, man. Yeah. So it could be more of an Eli Daniel Jones situation. Yeah. Even though I would say right now, Dalton is still a better quarterback than what Eli was at that point. Mm-hmm. I mean, Eli, we saw what he was at that point in his career. Like, it, it was <laughs> it was time. <laughs> it was time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas with Dalton, it's like, Dalton this year, he, he dealt with the injuries, and then Coach trying to play the game of, hey, let's start, what was it, what was his name, Ryan, Ryan Finley? That was a quarterback yeah, they yeah. put out there? Yeah. yeah. And then when yeah, he switched that, it back to Dalton, Dalton lit it up again. That's what I mean. That's what you're thinking, too. Like, they already went off of Dalton last year, and, and put their team in a much mm-hmm. worse position. So you're yeah. thinking, all right, Dolton's gone, but because they I said, don't know. Well, we want to we'll see, see what we that. have in Ryan Finley for some reason. And then after a couple of games of that, shout out to us. We we benefited from him. We thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and they went back to Dalton. And I think Dalton won the next game that they put him back in on. So. Yeah, he had like his typical stats. Right. Well, yeah, that was all without AJ. Too. I mean, I I think in general the Bengals draft was good too. Yeah, but like you said their draft position and definitely played a big role in that thing. Man. Yeah, when you're some picking of the names, yes, like that you you expect to hit it, and I feel like they definitely hit on a ton of those picks, man. All right, so now we go to Cleveland, and Cleveland. Let's see. <sighs> I guess. Well, actually, the the two picks that I definitely love were their top two guys, uh, Jedrick Will, uh, Jedrick Wills Jr. The tackle out of uh, Alabama, they definitely need the offensive line help. He's huge. That's definitely going to be a big time pickup. Outside of I think Andrew Thomas, he was in the conversation to be the top yeah. two, top three tackle. So yeah, they said they didn't him expect was, him to be there. So. Yeah, so that was huge. And that's him going at ten. So <laughs> it yeah. says a lot for him. And then also Grant Delpit out of uh, the safety out of LSU, he dropped on a ton of boards more so because of his tackling. But when we talk about 
a guy who can cover, get picks, highly productive in that element. He brings that to the table. Yeah. He just has shaky tackling. So hopefully we I mean, I think in the AFC North, that's a a big concern just because the style of ball that's played in the AFC North. Mm-hmm. I mean, your safeties have to tackle. Yeah. So the fact that he struggles with that, that could be an issue right there. But I mean, in terms of his value, though, from just a coverage standpoint, I think that he's top notch in that regard. And then Jacob Phillips, man. Jacob Phillips was the Robin to Patrick Queen down there at LSU, man. So I definitely like that pick a lot. And to get him in the third round, too. So what do you think? Uh, I was reading something that Phillips was a reach. Hmm? I was reading something that they thought Phillips was a reach. But See, for me, man. You like them? I I like that pick. I do. I, I just think, like, when we talk about reach... And this is a similar situation that could be said for Chase Claypool, right? People say, well, man, y'all kind of reached. He probably would have been there a little later. But the problem is when they were going to pick again, there's no guarantee that he, like another team in between those 10 to 15 picks, it was going to be available to you like that. So sometimes you do have to go ahead and say, look, let me just get this guy now because there's no guarantee that next round, by the time I pick in the next round, it's not like with, uh, with Cincinnati, for example, where they're picking you know, one, two at the beginning of every round. Like, the Browns, they weren't doing that. Right. Well, and that's the most interesting thing about the whole reach or, mm-hmm. or this. these guys had a bad draft. I mean, look at last year. Most were thinking the Raiders had, like, a top 20 yeah, draft yeah. or, you know, they were below mm-hmm. average or average draft, which they ended up having, hands down, the best draft yes. class last year. Mm-hmm. And then you have... Oh, you're reaching for these guys. You're Daniel, Daniel Jones getting the F grade and yeah. like D's and C's. People are saying mm-hmm. that was a complete reach. And now if he would have came out, you would you would have taken him number one overall yeah, if he was absolutely. coming out this year. Absolutely. So that's kind of the whole interesting thing with the reach. Like if you like your guy and he's competent, like I, mm-hmm. it's it's tough to judge right, right. now, really. And, 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 and we're not talking a difference of you know, a three round, like, hey, we have a fourth round grade and this guy, we're taking him in the second. That's different. But with these guys, if they all have that second round grade or that first round grade, but it's the difference of, oh, he's a top 10 versus a top 20 guy. Like, I don't mind reaching and just taking the guy that I really want right here. Right. People say, well, you could trade back. Well, trade back is still risky. There's no guarantee that that's going to work out for you. So if you really love the guy and you feel like, hey, man, he's going to play out for us, go ahead and get the guy. So. Yeah, um, yeah. It seems like the Browns had a pretty good draft too. I mean, everyone's Honestly, saying. I think the AFC North, man, as a whole. Was, like, dude, well, that was the yeah. thing. Whenever it comes to ranking them, I mean, you ain't gonna like that, huh? Dude, it's tough. I mean, I gotta. They had more picks. <laughs> every okay. team, every team had a first round pick, well, so and, gotta, and that's fine. But I'm just trying to figure out, like, because you ranked ours as an A, so I know I'm gonna it's not a lot dude, of room. No, well, I'm going to put yeah, I'm gonna put an A plus for the Ravens. Okay. And I'm gonna give Browns and Bengals an A too. Yeah. So that's uh, what grade of A between us, the Browns and the Bengals. I mean, they had they had first round picks, man. So their draft's gonna look better right now. So does that mean that their <laughs> draft grade is ranked higher then? I'll give them I'll give them a 94. Uh huh. And I'll give us yeah 93. 90, Fair enough then. 93.5. Fair enough. <laughs> Because I was sitting here, you know, I gave us a B. And yes. I was like, man, I thought we still hit. Like, and that's the thing that's funny. We talk about it. I'm an B, easy grader, dude. But it was, it was, I was laughing to myself because I was like, <laughs> dang, man, like we said a B. And I'm like, a B is still like good as heck. Like, what are we talking nah, about? Dude, here? Like, <laughs> no, nah, dude. I was looking, I was looking today where everyone had all these draft classes yeah. ranked. And they had Steelers at a B. I saw a B, like in the B 20s. Minus, yeah. Like in the 20s, like mm-hmm. when you compare them to all the other teams. So, yeah. I don't know. I think everyone else is easy, easy graders these days, too. <laughs> well, no. I think you hit, though, when you talk about not having a first-round pick. Like, it's a difference when, well, we, when we're saying our best player in this draft is Chase Claypool versus the Browns saying, well, we had Jedrick Wills. Right. And, uh, and uh, Grant Delpit or Bengals saying they got Joe Burrow and T. Higgins. Like, well, just, yeah. And I was going to bring this <clears> up, <throat> too. In a vacuum... If I'm saying Steelers, A, I just, you know, with what we had, this is, right, right. This is what I thought we did. In but their we'll, situation, it was A for Right, them. if you're stacking it up against other teams, that's when you just got kind of got to be real about it. Yeah. And like, ah, damn, like, they all had first-round picks. Mm-hmm. They all hit their needs and yeah. got talented players. So I'm not going to yeah. really knock them for that. Because, like, for the Ravens, I say the Ravens get an A-plus draft, and here's the thought process behind it. Obviously, the names we named at the top end were dope. But when you have that many picks, I think they had, what, 11 picks? Was it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
ten. Yeah, their yeah. team's already really good. Right. And they just but added. I felt like they added a ton of quality players, a ton of competition to some of these other positions as well. I thought that was huge, man. So that's why for me, I'm like, yeah, that's an A plus. And the fact that with all the needs that they need, and we talk about linebacker. You that's a home run with Patrick. Yeah, he's gonna man. Start. That, that's that's there. Their defense is already good. Yeah, and then when you bring in JK, like we already talked about the benefit of that. So for me, that's why I said they're at A plus. I have the Bengals at an A, just a regular A. But even with them, I still flirt with the idea of A plus. My whole concern with them is okay with the Joe Bro thing. How are we gonna see that play out? Like, do you feel that he is the new wave, the face of the franchise? Like, can he be that guy? Yeah, that's that's kind of your question. Right, I mean, that's my biggest question with him. Because you picked a different quarterback, right. but if you're thinking, just kind of like we said, if you like your guy, you like your guy. Right. We'll see how it plays out. Because just, the whole debate right now could have been, okay, we understand what Joe Burrow did that last year in college, but if Tua is healthy, mm-hmm. do you like him over Tua, realistically? And that's the whole debate. So in my mind, that's my thing. I'm just kind of torn between that right there. Right. But I don't fault them for making that. Yeah. If you like, that's, at the what, time. that's the thing. If you like <laughs> your guy, I mean, Daniel Jones and Dwayne Haskins is the perfect Prime example. example. Yeah. Absolutely. You need a quarterback, take a guy. Yeah. And now for the Browns, I wanted to give them a B plus, but I was like, man, <laughs> I, I really like Grant. I thought that he could ball You go A minus. Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> I was like, I can't go B. I don't want to put them at an A because I don't view them in the same vein as Cincinnati yeah. and Baltimore. But I felt like their draft was still better than just the B, mm-hmm. and that was why I thought with that with uh, these guys. Yeah. And also, man, I think that Harrison Bryant, the Titan they got out of Florida Atlantic, he's a tweener type guy, but definitely can create mismatches in space, man. In terms of like, because I'm anticipating he's, I don't think he's gonna play receiver. Because I don't know if he's fast enough to be a receiver. But at the same time, I don't really think he's big enough to be a tight end. So I'm anticipating him being kind of like that, not even an H-back type, but oh, really? just the, the guy they're going to be moving around to create mismatches with. And he's going to draw the third guy, the third corner or this, the linebacker right here. And I think those are matches that he can definitely thrive in. Well, they don't have any depth behind Odell and Jarvis. So there's that. Well, they then- did pick up uh, Njoku's uh, option, though. Okay, so they have they have Njoku though at tight end plus mm-hmm. Hooper, yeah. and they got Jarvis yeah. and Odell. So that's right. what I'm saying. This guy could somehow fill that flex role mm-hmm. where he's going to get very favorable matchups in that role, right? Because I'm assuming this guy, uh, this Vikings guy, or yeah, he was the Vikings uh, uh, court, yeah, yeah, coordinator coming in. Mm-hmm. He's going to want to use some of those two tight end sets. Yes, yeah. yeah so absolutely. I'm assuming this guy's going to be the third one, and in case one of them goes down, he's still going to be able to do that because yeah. they got Chubb and absolutely, bro. You got your two main guys at receivers, so that, I mean, because probably... backfield, I mean, I, with Chubb and Hunt now, because Hunt's going to be back for the whole season, whereas yeah. last year he was, you know, half. Of Some of their formations could be interesting. So we'll Very. see what happens with them. <laughs> yeah. But either way, I think the AFC North as a whole got better. I think that they definitely, I mean, all the teams that we listed, man, they all hit on they major did. things, man. Some just had a lot more picks than others, but I feel like everybody really, really hit and got better. And I think the AFC North is going to be even more exciting next year, barring injuries, because obviously oh, man. the Bengals last year with Billings, he get hurt, remember, and, and goes on IR before the season even starts. So, I think barring anything like that happening, I think the FC North is going to be a fun, fun division to watch, man. It's definitely going to be interesting. You're seeing these memes and uh, little pictures that are being made. Have you seen it where uh, we got three Heismans and Ben yeah, and, and yeah. the division here? You know what? You should probably switch that up and show that the other three don't have Super Bowl championships, mm. and we got Ben with two. Come rings. on, man! You know Heisman <laughs> sounds better, bro. Everybody loves a Heisman. <laughs> let's let's see. What, yeah. I mean, we will put Lamar up there because he's got an MVP at least, yeah. like in Ben's class, a little bit at least for this yeah. season coming up, not career. But the other two, come on, give me a break. <laughs> we have. I, I know I was big on Burrow, but he hasn't proven anything. Now <laughs> I just love how you flip flop it all the time. Now, now he's going to the Bengals. Yeah. It's gonna be a tough road for him and Baker. I mean, he had a bad last season, so. Yeah. Let's stop acting like oh, these guys Heisman and everything, and then maybe throw RG three, and I'm like, oh, all right, that's what we doing. Oh uh, <laughs> man, we got three Heisman trophies on the same team. Oh, all right, cool, cool, all right. I don't really know who was making those. If they were, if it was actually Steeler fans making them or not, I can't, yeah. I can't really remember. Oh, but man. I just wanted to say that I could dig it, man. I could dig it. <laughs> but I mean, that is interesting. Like, even though I'm making fun of it a little mm. bit, like you got three big names, yeah, and you got true. Big Ben coming back. Like, it's yeah, it's gonna it's, be really interesting. It's gonna be an exciting division to watch, man. Offense, defense across the board. Like, it's gonna be fun, man. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited about it. I know everybody else um, gonna be excited about it too, man. Unfortunately, we both got in terms of draft. Like, 
I'll just say this. They won the battle, not the war. They, well, they we won haven't the, got to the war yet. Man. We're building up. <laughs> they won the, the draft class battle right now, but Jeez. how much is it going to matter during the regular season? We'll see. <laughs> uh, so, so you'll say how much is it going to matter, but yeah, we, we talk about how we're going to need some of our players to step up. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How much though? Yeah. What? Chase Claypool, Anthony McFarlane, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping so, yeah. yeah. We got three receivers, though. High Smith, he going to need to do it, yeah, potentially. I'm hoping so, but yeah, yeah. I mean, let's see within the Steelers' structure, though. I think we're going to, yeah. we could potentially groom our guys a little better than these hey, other teams. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I'll give credit to the Ravens. The Bengals and Browns have proven yeah. as organizations, so they, mm. they're a little helter-skelter on yeah. that type of stuff. Ravens I would have way more man. faith in the Ravens yeah. developing their guys. Absolutely. <laughs> I like it, man. All right. So, yeah, we rank fourth. We both agree we rank fourth right now. Yes, unfortunately. But we're going to do another ranking once the season gets here, and then we get we square away that way, baby. What do you mean? Just We'll uh, do our power ranking. Yeah, well, this yeah. is just draft class, right? Yeah, here. so we're good, man. We're good. <laughs> so, yeah. I like it, man. So, are, we, sure. yo, are we wrapped up here? We, yeah, yeah, we're, we're good ready, here, man. We're ready to roll. Absolutely, we're ready to transition man. into the... We're good. Man. The new exciting thing we have coming up. For yes, indeed, man. So... Interview time coming up, man. So yeah. make sure that you're tuning in, man. We got Kavon Walker. Dude, wait, yeah. you know what? What's up? It's actually uh Savon. Oh, Savon. Dude, no joke. Oh, I'm glad you found out that. No Excuse joke. me, Savon Walker. I think everyone has thought it's Kavon. Yeah, so we got Savon Walker, man. Recently signed <laughs> D tackle to the Steelers out of the XFL, man. So definitely gonna enjoy this interview, man. Make sure you stay tuned, baby. And appreciate everybody for listening, as always, and the viewers. So until next time, peace. peace. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We talked about it a little bit earlier in the podcast. It is here. It is time. We have the man recently signed, D-Tackle Man. He's got played at the University of Maryland. He was signed with the Chicago Bears and the Kansas City Chiefs. Was recently in the XFL with the New York Guardians where he led the XFL in sacks. Defensive tackle who recently signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers, Kavon, oh, excuse me, Savon Walker. Savon, man, yes, what's sir, up, yes, man? Sir. How y'all doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Happy to be here, man. Man, we appreciate you, man, with, with the exotic name, man, Savon. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> man, I, I tell you what, man, the fans are not going to forget you at all with a name like that, bro. I think that's pretty dope on your ha- on your behalf. Shout out to your parents, man. Yes, sir. You got you to gotta make a statement before you make a statement. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Respect. All right, man. So uh, let's get into this thing, man. So what led to you signing with the XFL? And just talk about your overall experience with the organization. Uh, what led to me signing with the XFL, after uh, my little stint with the Chiefs, uh, didn't get any workouts, get any calls. So I basically started back working again. And then I uh, looked through my email one day, sent an email from the XFL, invited me to uh, the draft process. So I was like, Man, why not? Spoke to my agent about it. Took a chance with it. Just told myself I was going to go and have fun with it. Just be able to play football again. And why not be able to play? To get paid to play football again. So I went out there, got uh, drafted by the New York Guardians, which is a team that I grew to love and like. And the fan base out there was amazing. But it was just a fun experience, man. Went out there, did my thing, did the best I could. I told myself I was going to go out there and have fun. And the chicks going to fall where they may. And they fell in the right places. Wish the season would have finished out because I always wonder where I could have finished off my season with the sack numbers and stuff like that. But overall, it was a great experience. I had fun out there, met some good guys, good little competition level, just ready to try to get some back to the NFL, man. Man, because I was going to ask you too, man, in terms of the competition, because I mean, you had, was it four and a half sacks and I think five games? So you were cooking. I mean, any passer should tell you that, man. So just like, how did you feel at that level with those type of guys? I mean, I felt I felt good, man. I felt like some of the guys that were there, they were former NFL guys, the guys trying to get back to the NFL. So they got the same type of hunger that I had. But I felt like the way I put it in my mind when I got there is like this is just a, a, a quick stop. It's a one-stop shop. I'm going to get in, get out, do what I can, have fun with it. I and like I did it. what I could with the five games that we had, man, just out there having fun and just playing relentless. I like that. Now, how do you stay humble through this process? Obviously, leading the XFL in sacks and now coming to Pittsburgh, a lot of people are thinking that you're almost a shoe in to be on the defensive line rotation. How do you stay humble through that process? I mean, me, I've always been an underdog, so I'm always going to keep that same mentality, man. I came from a smaller school. You know what I mean? Like I'm from D.C., Southeast D.C. at that. Wait, 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 wait a minute, Savon. Wait, did you just say you came from a small school? Man, you went to the University <laughs> of Maryland. See, I take offense to that because I went to James Madison University. I wanted to go to Maryland. Right, I didn't, right. I didn't so get the I'm offer, all right? 
you see, we're in the Big Ten. You already know how that goes. And we're the smallest school in the Big Ten. I mean, we're one of the smallest schools in the Division One ranks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we didn't get a lot of looks in. Because when you're not winning, you know the looks not coming. So, Very true. I mean, so I, I consider us a little small pond school. But we did our thing here, man. I like it, man. <laughs> and shoot, man, speaking on the, uh, the Maryland uh, connection anyways, you reunited with two of your former teammates, man, Anthony uh, McFarland and Antoine Brooks Jr., man. So just what's your feelings on that? Wait, wait, wait. You, you're saying those two, but you can't speak about Derwin Gray and Trey Allen. Oh, <laughs> man. I totally forgot about Derwin. You're right. Absolutely. Yes, yes. And me and Derwin, me and, me and Derwin with the high school. I knew Derwin since my freshman year high school. We've been on wow. every team together. And it's another reunited experience for us, man. That's dope, man. That is dope. We definitely got that whole Maryland I'm connection. I'm gonna say, yeah, is, is what's going on with Maryland, man? Y'all got this Pittsburgh pipeline going on right now, man. I mean, I feel like they finding what the talent at, man. <laughs> you know, we get looked over a lot, so they they find the talent in Maryland. So I, all I can do is praise it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm very happy for those guys, Antoine. I remember I I, I co-hosted Antoine as a fishing visit at Maryland. So like, this is very wow. special for me with Antoine. Anthony McFarland was always a tough guy. Great guy. You know, we offer the same area, so it's just a blessing, man. Like, literally, everybody's on the team is from this area. That's Trey, dope, man. Derwin, everybody, literally, is from DMV area. We went to Maryland, and then, look at this now, on the same team and in the, in the, on the top of the top football rankings. That, that is dope, like the, man. The way football goes. That is dope right there. That's an awesome experience, too, man. And now, speaking of Anthony, man, so, obviously, once he got drafted, you know, everybody talks about the different reports when they start digging in, and they said there were reports coming out about his attitude and things like that. And I said, man, what better person to speak on that than you being that you were teammates of his, man? So when you hear people say that he had attitude issues and things like that, man, what is your response to that? My response to that is that people who say anything from the outside looking at people take, take passion as attitude like that. Mm. What I see from Anthony, he's always been a passionate guy who loves the game. Of course, you want to get mad when you lose and stuff like that. But other than that, he's a hardworking guy. I see no character issues within him. He's going to work hard. He's going to put that team on his back if he has to. Like, he's one of those guys he's a workhorse. He's like going to work every day because the background that he comes from. Of course, it's going to be a little bit of anger within passion because literally football is a violent game. You've got to play with passion or you're going to get hair up there. So, like, it's, people really often misinterpret passion with a uh, bad attitude and stuff like that. But I don't see that happening. He's a great guy. I've been around him for a few years now. And from what I've experienced myself, I can't speak for other people. For all our friends, how we're going to do, we just want to play ball. Respect, man. Major respect. I like that. Now, this one's a little random. Who is your biggest inspiration or motivator in your life? Everybody asks me that, but I always go to my mom, man. My mom is my biggest inspiration motivator. She has been since the day I stepped out of the womb, man. She's my biggest supporter, and everything I do is for her and my family, honestly. Is there any reason why? Uh, my mom raised me and my brother and sisters. Single mother of five. I'm the baby, mm. and I'm the biggest baby. But uh, <laughs> it's just the strength that she displayed to me over the years, even when I didn't know what we were going through. Like she always made sure I didn't know what was going on until I got. Then as I got older, I realized what was going on. But you know, she always sheltered us from the bad things, even though we were going through them a lot. I like that. No, that's dope. Now, what have you told yourself after being bounced around the NFL a little bit, and uh, almost being told like, "Hey, you're not good enough"? What have you been telling yourself? to make sure you could get back into this position? My thing is, I always told myself I'm going to keep fighting because I can't fight anymore. If I want some, I'm going to find a way to get back to it. And one thing that I've learned over the years, I've talked to a lot of vets on the teams I've been on. Like, I've been on, and then great D-lines I've been on. The Chiefs D-line was a great D-line. The Bears D-line in 2018 was a phenomenal D-line. Like, I've been around some good guys, and they told me it's not about where you land, it's about where's the best fit for you. So don't give up till you find that fit. Because I may not have been a fit for the Chiefs or the Bears, you know what I mean? But this may be my fit, and I'm going to make it my fit. Mm. It's all about finding the right fit for you, and you got to put your skills on display and get yourself out there. And that's what I'm I'm, I'm going to do. There's no, I'm, I want to do it, that's what I'm going to do. I love it. I like that. There it is. Talk to him, man. Talk to him. So, Savon, man, just transition out of the XFL. What ultimately led to you signing on with the Steelers? I feel as though it was just the, the film I put out there, man. Like, I... I didn't really talk to too many people, you know what I mean? I just kept my head down. I enjoyed the process. And then I just put, the, put everything I had to do, I put it on the field, man. I enjoy beating guys up with them between the lines without going to jail for it. <laughs> it's an amazing experience to get a little aggression out. But the XFL was just a, 
a great stepping stone for me to get back where I need to be. That's one of the most. That's one some of the most fun I had playing football in a long time. Dude, that's awesome, man. That's great to hear. And honestly, man, we've had a couple of guys that have played in the XFL. They said the same thing. It was a very good, enjoyable experience for them, man. Yes, sir. Was there something about the fit with the Steelers that made you want to come here? Say again one more time. Was there something about the Steelers, something about the fit, the coaching staff, something that, you know, made sense to you? Why, I mean, you know why Coach you Dunbar here? is one of the most well-known oh, yeah. people Highly respected. in the football world. To be able to play, from, play with him and learn from him and all the things that I have in my toolbox that he can work on and build on, it's an honor to be on that team. And then it's just the tradition of the Steelers overall. Me being a defensive player, I used to play linebacker. Like, everything about defense is, in, is instilled in this team, and I love that about the Steelers nation. Absolutely, man. Hey, I can tell you firsthand, man, it's nothing like playing defense in that black and gold uni, man. You come out there. I can't wait, man. <laughs> like, I said, man, defenders in Pittsburgh get the same type of recognition as offensive players anywhere else. Like, only in Pittsburgh does that yes, happen, sir. man. <laughs> yes, now, sir. now, you're going to get an opportunity to, I mean, and Deke talked about this earlier, to legitimately compete to be in that D-line rotation. So, what does that mean to you, man? It means a lot to me, man. It means I got to go in there with my head on straight and with my work clothes, my work boots, and my pail ready for work every day. I'm going to go in there with the same mentality that I want to spot. I'm not here to just play around. I'm not here to just be a body. I'm here to want a spot. I want to help this team. I want to be in position to put this team in places that they couldn't have been in past years. You know what I'm saying? I want to be mm-hmm. a helping piece to this team. And I will do anything I have to do, whether it's playing nose, Free tech, guard, and whatever they need to be, that's what I want to do. I want to be a catalyst for this team. I like that. I was uh, searching through Twitter here, and uh, I saw that back in the day you were voted by someone, or they they recommended you as the best Big Ten Twitter account to follow, and that you were a natural at it. Now, my question is, have you thought about, I don't know, acting, entertaining? Because I'm assuming that means you have a good personality, (laughs) right, to get that kind of honor. Uh, have you thought about uh, I if mean, you weren't playing football? Like, were you thinking that type of road? One thing that always derailed me from jumping into that scene, I always had a little bit of stage fright. <laughs> <laughs> no but way. That, wow. What they said is definitely true. I love people. I love making people laugh. I'm generally like the life of the party. I bring good energy anywhere I go. I just want to see people smile and be laugh because I know how it feels to be down, so I want to be the person to pick anybody up. I love being out there. Do you know as a big dude, you got to be funny. So I'm a big funny man. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I feel like all the big guys I know, man, they, they are funny. Like, you got to have that personality. You're right. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. You got to be able to bring it out. All right. Respect. Respect. Now, Savon, before we let you go, man, we ask all our guys to share their welcome to the NFL moment, man. So tell us, man, what was your official welcome to the NFL moment? Uh, let me think. Let me think. My official welcome to the NFL moment. It wasn't even like a particular play. It was an introduction to the game speed. Mm. And it wasn't even in game. I'm going to tell you that now. It was a <laughs> practice in KC. And we were doing long drive drill. It's my first time ever doing long drive drill. Oof. And mind you, I'm not in top shape just yet. This ain't play drive nonstop. Yeah. No matter what's going on, get right back down on that ball. And I'm just like, that moment right there was like the hey. eighth play of 15. The eighth play. <laughs> not 14, not 13, but the eighth play. And I had to make a decision in my head whether I wanted to be there or not. And that was my worst in the moment. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be a lot of things that you don't want to do, but you have to do. And that was a moment right there. I did not want to be there, but I had to be, man. But that's my worst NFL moment. Man. It was it was tough out there, man. I almost died. L- listen, <laughs> man. I understand that feeling one thousand <laughs> percent. Anytime, man, you go through the long, they, it's either long play drive or they, they do the two minute drill, whatever it is. You're not allowed to sub, and like you said, it's gonna be fifteen mm-hmm. hard plays. They can score on the first play. You still gonna get fifteen out of it, <laughs> man. You question? And then you know, me. as a D lineman, I'm I'm fighting right. with a three hundred pound at first before right. I gotta run. <laughs> right. It really makes you question: Do you love football? <laughs> Most definitely. <Man. laughs> Oh, they like say you, the man. sun and conditioning will turn a man into a, a baby real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no question. <laughs> I like that, man. Savon, man, it's been a blast having you on the podcast, man. We definitely appreciate you. Wish you nothing but the best. We're excited to watch you ball out for the Steelers this upcoming season, man. 
Thank you guys so much. Thank you for having me, man. I hope you guys have a great day, man. No doubt, man. No problem, man. Peace. Have a good one.